My name is Felicity Beckett and I am the manager of a local cinema. Hi, I'm Michael. I'm a, a body therapist. I live in Brighton. Everything that is in my life at the moment is perfect for getting me on this next road. Love, um, creativity, uh, connection. If we achieve this, then world peace is possible. Hello, Michael. Hello, Felicity. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> that was unexpected. I love you. Excuse me, you made me spit out my parsnip cake. See how comfortable I am with it now. Yeah. Say it again. <laughs> cool. So what's changed for you? Um, mm, I've, it's been a really massive few weeks, actually. Um, I, I got a promotion at work. Yeah, which, um, congratulations. Yeah, 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 which was really, really lovely. And... Um, and it's it's funny. I cannot look at anything now as what it is. Mm. You know, I just I can't just say, oh, I got a promotion at work. I, it's it's I've got this new spiritual challenge <laughs> mm, mm. going on. You know, that is um, is so interesting that it's been sent to me now, or that I have felt um, spiritually equipped to deal with it. Yeah, I've been given the role as of, as general manager. At, um, at the cinema that I work at and then I sort of wanted to ring them afterwards and go just just forget it I, I'm just a terror I'm the worst person for the job you know don't give it to me and then when they gave it to me I knew that all of that was actually my very massive ego keeping me very small but I think one of the biggest things I've always faced in life is having such an enormous ego that I'm so frightened to fail that I won't do anything. Mm. Mm. And um, and that manifests itself in a very strange egoic manner. Oh, is the ego born out of fear? Mm. It is, it's, a, it's an other self that we present mm. to the world to protect. Mm who we really are yeah I, th I think that's a nice description I'm I'm sort of having an affair at the moment okay <laughs> <laughs> um, and it's with the course in miracles oh <laughs> I must do that okay, and the reason yeah. why I say it's an affair is because it's I, it's been in my life over the last five years yeah and it's been sitting on my table and I flick through it and I put it away and yeah. it's split into three sections yeah and the first part is about the ego and about how um we it, about the protection that we perceive ourselves as separate yes. from spirit god universe yes. and so forth if we think we're separate we have to defend ourselves or otherwise we will be annihilated yeah so all the time the ego there is to sort of say um uh, attack that thing or that person mm. to preserve myself Yes. And I think a lot of the stuff that the Course in Miracles talks about is not having attacking thoughts. So you're not preserving your ego. Yes. That you come from a place of openness and surrender to the universe and to God. So I don't know if that helps. You yeah, no, saying. completely, completely. Um, because, and in a way, that's the perfect way to do it. Because the ego, it, when it's in a state of fear, mm. is its perfect state. Mm. And it can only really respond to fear, to other people's fear. Mm. But if you attack it, if you will, with love, mm. like with just openness, mm. with with positivity, with kindness, mm. with patience, you know, with uh, I mean, I've been listening to so much Matt Kahn, and he always just says, "Be kind to yourself. Just be nice." And it's kind of like, oh, that's just so, not rocket science. But it's like, <laughs> you know, and it's like. And, and why am I only hearing this now? But it is, mm. it's a very important device to get around the cunning, baffling, powerful, boundaryless ego. Mm. Like some of the most challenging ego situations I've been in are in meditation and, and yoga classes. Yeah, 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 do you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. With people desperate to do it right or yeah. to be seen to be doing it right and you know and I mean, it's, it is fascinating that kind of because we want i think we are i mean the course in miracles talks about um that it's all a projection 
And yes. I think other philosophies talk about life being a projection and an illusion. Mm. And it's our separateness from the universal God. That's where the ego comes from. Yes. Um, and therefore we are all constantly trying to define ourselves by being separate. I am a man, you are a woman. Yes. They are this, that I am that. Yes. Um, I am left wing, they are right wing, they are da 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 da. And we're constantly separating ourselves from each other, which is mm. what the ego wants yes. to survive. Yes. And to actually have the thing of being kind to yourself is strange for the ego. Yes. Because we're conditioned not to be kind to ourselves. Yes. We're always having tests at schools, assessments at work, kind of, um, there's other religions that kind of teach people that they're unworthy and yes. not good enough yes. and so we get socially conditioned and then those thoughts and beliefs encode into our neurology mm. back to the, the physical side of the, the synapses and that and then they become the pattern that we have just recently this last couple of days i've been kind of like frustrated and angry mm. at the state of the world or my perception yeah. of the world the inequities of the world and how it seems to be kind of just getting worse and worse and worse mm. and that whole one percent and um, and feeling like, oh, what can I do? Mm. What can I can I do? And James was saying, you've quite, you've either got to be at peace with it mm. um, and find that inner peace and um, let the ego go or, or do something about it, um, but don't let it eat you up. Yeah, that's again the ego is is is. And it fuels into the negativity. It really does. It's yeah. you know I can all the the negativity in the world. I I think is all one and the same energy. So whether it's a negativity, a negative emotion like anxiety mm. that someone's feeling in Cuba is it's still part of the negative energy that someone else is feeling in you Sudan. Con- you just connection, you mean? Yeah. Everything is connected. Yeah, you know, the yeah, yeah. physics thing. Yeah. And, you know, you can, there is that much negativity and it all sort of connects into each other. Yes. Whereas if the, the new consciousness that I'm aware of and the, the love revolution that I want to be part of... Mm is counterbalancing that with positivity, you know, and actually being conscious and aware that the more positive I am, I am actually making a difference. Mm. I really, really am, you know, and I can feel it. You in know, what way? I, I, I can feel I infect people, mm. you know, in the way that I used to feel that if I walked into a room, everyone would want to throw up. Uh, now, <laughs> don't mean that. That's your negative ego speaking. Yeah, no, a little bit. I, I mean, I, you know, I've obviously plumbed some pretty, you know, mm. miserable depths of emotion and misery and depression and all that sort of thing, you know. And and I get it. I I can see how that all happens. You know, I mean, we've discussed. I'm a recovering alcoholic, and I'm very happy for people to know that. And you know, and I'm I'm so grateful that I am. You know, because which bit are you grateful for? All of it. Okay, brilliant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, really. You know, I'm so grateful. Would you expand on that? Because if I hadn't have had my my personal rock bottom, then I wouldn't have had the gift of despair to want to either kill myself or get better. Right. And I chose the path of getting better. You know, lots of people Good. don't, which I is know. terrible, terrible, terrible. Of course, but. I now feel that that's what put me on the path that I'm on. And, and in a way, I can see that for the world. You know, the world is having a spiritual rock bottom, mm. an emotional rock bottom. Mm. <laughs> and then hopefully what will happen is that that will help it fast track into the love revolution. Well, that's what I hope that, as well. I yeah. mean, I've been reading a guy called um, Wallace D. Wattles. Oh, right, from yeah. 1908. Yeah. Similar sort of philosophy to what we talk about. Mm. and. He has this affirmation. It says, I will view the world as moving towards perfection and completion. Um, and that kind of really helps me centre me. Because like, although from our perspective in 2015, that it looks like things are just going... Oh, Getting worse and worse and worse. Yeah, yeah. Maybe it needs to hit the rock bottom. Like I was saying to James, maybe it needs to hit that rock bottom, as you're describing. Yeah. For us to kind of go... And then come out of it. Yeah. I mean, I hope... Me, as Felicity, the only thing that I can do on a daily basis, you know, um, that is a tangible thing, because I can feel it in my body, and I can feel it when I talk to other people, is get positive. Yeah. It's important to do yourself work. It's a discipline, it's a practice, you must do it. You must do it, yeah. saying, and it really is, it is a discipline yes. to do the affirmations and the cleansing. Um, it is work, so you have to put effort and time and energy into it. Um, and 
you must do it to make the change. Yeah. If you you changed from being an alcoholic and yes. your life is much better, yes. that's had a ripple effect in your family, your friends, you going out into the world and living your life. Yes. That will have a butterfly effect. Yeah. Same with me, same with the others. And if we all kind of take that on board and transform the negative ego into a much more um, loving being perspective, then those ripple, those butterflies will create the... Exactly. Um, the... the, the, the uh, What's that called? Hurricane. Whirlwind? Yeah. Hurricane? Well, whirlwind. <laughs> yeah. The whirlwind of the love revolution. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. So it is, it, you are helping the world, aren't exactly. you? Exactly. And then you have the energy, you seem to have the energy and inspiration to actually go out into the world and make other changes. Yes. Really. And you never know what it is that you're actually going to do. Like, you know, like I've, I've never felt compelled to go to London and wave placards. And maybe that's not, you know, and then I feel terribly guilty about it. And then that becomes you know, a negative thing, but maybe what I can do in my capacity as a manager in a cinema is I can show a film or a documentary or something that will get people to come in and see it and then that will change people. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, I, I, I know that watching films changes people's lives. Well, that's why in dictatorships, you know? they, they the first thing to go with the arts. Exactly. Because they, the dictators <clears throat> um, know that it, cha- it changes hearts and minds. It does. And so that's the first thing to go. That's yeah. why all the intelligentsia are kind of exterminated because... They are the ones that change things. Yes. Really. Basically, what you're saying, all you need is love, as the Beatles would say. Yeah, yeah. And although some people sort of say, oh, well, that's sort of very hippie and new agey and kind of life isn't like that, it's not like that if you don't want it to be like that. Exactly. But I think for peace of mind and peace of the world and to raise civilization, then yeah, all you need is love. Yeah. Love for yourself yeah. and love for humanity, even those people who each of us perceive as being the enemy, yeah. really. You don't have those attacking thoughts that the Course talks about. Exactly. And, and every judgment it is an attacking thought. We separate, and yes. it's the ego that's how it was formed, because it's separated from the God Force. And we spend all our fearful lives trying to defend that ego. And that seems to be one of the biggest challenges, doesn't it? Yeah, definitely. For all humanity, but specifically at the moment, it seems, with this whole divide getting... Yes, I think that we are evolving spiritually yeah. uh, in the same way that we're evolving physically you know Bashar says that in the future we, we don't even have form I can understand that yeah I can understand that yeah and it makes um, sense to me yeah and I think we're evolving spiritually so at the moment we are in the dark ages you know and it's it's feudal it's all perception as well like um a friend of mine um is loves yachting you know mm. and she's not rich but she goes to a yacht club where there's lots of rich people and she said it was the funniest thing she ever had this woman sobbing in the toilets, telling her friend that she was down to her last nine million, you know, and it's kind of like, she said, I, I actually felt sorry for her because for her, she only had nine of them left, you know, <laughs> so I to digest and she that. genuinely was terribly, terribly <laughs> distraught that she was down to her last nine million, you know. But it is, it is, it is a perception is an interesting one, Felicity. I was talking to a work <laughs> colleague, and um, I was talking about uh, the, again the one percent, and um, she was saying to me, Michael, you know, even if you were in a, a, a bed sit with no furniture, you're still richer than ninety exactly. percent of the other people yeah. around the world because of the, the way it's all organised and that yeah. kind of stuff. And you sort of go, oh, hang on a minute, yeah, I need to sort of remember that as well. We are beyond phenomenally wealthy, you know, and it's and and yet we think, poor me. Mm. at the same time Why? you know because we think we haven't got enough Why? and we're constantly told we don't have enough you know? but again, it's, I think and we're we... not enough are we that's what we're told we're made go. to feel that's yeah. what it is we're not enough therefore I need uh, yeah we're not enough I'm not enough <laughs> I'm not enough therefore yeah. I have to fill that that void with with trinkets and baubles and whatever it happens to be and really. houses and you know I mean whenever I look at these sort of super rich people like say with the Osbournes, you know, they're not, not exactly, you know, in the trillion zone, but they were all sat in the kitchen, you know, like everyone else. Do you mean else. Sharon and, and... Yeah, do you remember the Osbournes okay. and yeah, things yeah, like yeah. that? Yeah, 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 You know, and they so, so suburban at the end of the day, yeah. you know, and I just think it doesn't matter what cape you wear, mm. <laughs> you know, you're, you're still actually... Well, at the end of the day, much... well, yeah, everybody shits and pisses, don't they? Yeah. And then when yeah, everyone yeah. gets cold, snot runs out your nose and we're all going to die. So yeah. we're, we're, we are all the same. And maybe that's part of the, the fear as well, as that kind of thing. It's that like, we are all the same. We are, we are and it's all... awful. Yeah, I don't want to be the same as you. <laughs> maybe. Yeah. It's so hard to accept a one consciousness. It's so hard to accept that we 
is it is it that simple but i think it's what we search for and strive for all the times and art is the thing that connects us mm. you know like say for instance Shaun the sheep mm. you know and um wallace and gromit mm-hmm. and th- they are globally huge yeah you know because people in beijing understand Shaun the Sheep yeah. and Wallace and Gromit in the same way as everyone does because it's it's made with love, it's made with complete connection to source yeah. and we are all the flipping same. Yeah, and that's the love thing, isn't it? That you have yes. to have the practice of discipline and to do it is to, is to remind yourself constantly day, day after day that we are all the same and that going through life with love, mercy and compassion is the work of God really and yeah. any, any, any other judgment any other condemnation is actually if you want to say it, is the work of satan if you not that i believe in satan really, yes well, because it's, it's about separateness it's, it's the separateness yeah, yeah exactly saying so you're i'm a man you're a woman therefore i'm better than you or i'm you know yeah I'm and that's that's also not to say that you failed if you feel these things because you know like i'm actually quite enjoying at the moment being very angry because <laughs> I've always thought it's such a bad thing mm. you know and now I realise that it's just a thing mm. it's an emotion that mm. I can feel mm. and I, you know so many so all my life I've thought oh my god I'm angry that means I'm going to explode that means someone's going to get hurt that means I'm going to make an idiot out of myself you know and actually you know because I believe it or not have been attempting to do my spiritual practice I have been some mornings getting up at six o'clock wow. in the morning to do my prayer and meditation and I'm aware that with this new job that I've got I've got to take care of myself mm. I've got to take care of myself I've got to take care of this and basically this, and this yeah exactly both these things are so important but we are human and we have this full gamut of emotions mm. from a to Z and anger is a massive one jealousy rage greed and yes they're all the negative base emotions but they come up Mm. they do you know so what do I do with them Mm. you know so I had this situation the other day at work where I raged at an email I was sent raged at it you know and I rang people and I was like but I didn't respond to the email I knew better than to do that and um and then I could just feel this little voice inside me saying, this is your ego. It's all ego. You know, I didn't like being challenged. Didn't like it at all. And I didn't, and I wasn't coping well with it, you know. And I was just, so I, la- I allowed the anger to be part of my day, you know. And then by letting it out, I almost allowed the voice behind it to point me in the right direction. Oh, that's lovely. Yeah. That's lovely. And I think that's I think that's so important for us to feel our feelings genuinely yeah, yeah, yeah. and be able to take them to a safe space. You know, like I'll, I'll often sound it off at Paul, you know, and just go, rah, and he'll be like, that's because of this. And often I can see that my jealousy, my rage, my greed, blah, 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 is mine mm. because the same thing doesn't make someone else angry. Mm, mm, mm. So it's my ego mm. that I'm having to get over. Mm. So I am really enjoying feeling everything. <laughs> <laughs> Even though it's uncomfortable, mm, mm. it's such a lesson. And this is what's so great. It's interesting kind of, if, if I may sort of refer to it when you you know, opening up about being an alcoholic. Mm. One of the things I was reading about people who who um, have that situation is that they there's a lot of anger that they push down. Huge. And that's part Huge. of the thing, that they're, yeah. they're, they're drinking to kind of push those emotions yes. down. Really. to shut it all up. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, it's yeah. In- interesting, you know, that you're a recovering alcoholic and you've been um, sober, is that what you say? Yeah, yeah, yeah. For a long time now. Yeah. And now you're allowing that feeling and emotion to come up safely but n- safely yes. not consume you and yeah. not to be a nihilistic to everybody else around yeah. you but to actually be responsible for your feelings and emotion hang on i'm feeling angry or i need to express this physically emotionally spiritually but it's not going to consume me it's not me and i will let it the energy come through me and then i will listen to the vo- voice of reason or god yeah 
to guide me to a loving, compassionate <laughs> yeah. way of being. Exactly. And it was kind of like this anxiety that I've been in and, you know, this vortex of busyness and busyness begets busyness begets busyness and anxiety begets anxiety begets anxiety. And it's kind of True. like, and I'm seeing it and I'm seeing it and I'm seeing it and it's slowing down, it's slowing down. And oh, is, that's wonderful. Yeah. That sounds like a real insight and a real breakthrough for you. Yeah, huge, really big. That's and brilliant. This, this is the first week that I've been able to breathe and go, wow, this this kind of seems to be working. Don't I say it, touch wood. Uh. <laughs> yes, it is working. You know, yeah. it's, it's guiding you so far to date. Mm. You know, five years' time, it, you might be go- going in a different direction. Who knows? But basically, yeah. all you need is love, and it's working towards that intention, isn't it? Yes. Which is what all the avatars say. Yes. And, you know, I, from what I can gather, that that's what Jesus' message was. Yeah. Love yourself and love other people. Yeah, and don't then just cooperate with joy. Yeah, this what? <laughs> just discorporate with joy. Discorporate. I yeah, heard that. it's Something. such a great word, isn't it? Yeah. It's literally just, <laughs> just disintegrates. You know, oh, that's lovely. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, it's what kind of Abraham Hicks talks about. Yes. You know, and and Bashar talks about that, and Donald Welsh and Matt Kahn. Yeah. Um, Emmett, uh, Wallace Wattles, they all the great teachers seem to talk about the same thing. Yeah. You know, it is about the love, and it's. The, e- the negative ego, which is the fear, which kind of disconnects us from that love and that compassion and that connection, mm. really. But it is a discipline. And it is a practice. And you do have, have to, to do, do it. it. <laughs> 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 High five. <laughs>